Welcome to ever increasing, ever increasing faith. Grow in godliness. Grow in godliness. We walk by faith, not by sight. By faith, not by sight. Hello and welcome to Ever Increasing Faith Television. I'm Pastor Frederick Price Jr. In honor of 30 years of Ever Increasing Faith and 55 years in ministry, we bring you Dr. Frederick Casey Price, The Making of an Apostle of Faith. For those of you who have watched this broadcast, you know that my father was one of the first men of God to bring you great lessons in faith. By bringing this extraordinary message, he expanded our spiritual borders to include greater landscapes of life more abundantly. Dr. Price knew with a certainty that God had called him to teach the word of faith. He even knew that God called him to go on television in key parts of the United States. What he didn't know back then was that he was fulfilling the unique calling of an apostle. Today, we reflect on the storied life of a humble man and the making of an apostle. Fred Price was born during the Great Depression on January 3rd, 1932, in Santa Monica, California. The oldest of two children, young Fred was a handsome yet mischievous latchkey kid who often did school. The son of non-practicing Jehovah Witness parents, young Fred never would have imagined that there would be a call on his life that would dramatically impact the church. I had come out of a very dysfunctional home situation. I had no guidance from my parents. I palled around with a guy and um, I think we're about the same age. Anyway, we used, we did school a lot. And so one day his mama caught him, his mother caught him, and of course I was with him. And, and the mama said to me, you will never amount to anything. Although Fred wasn't born again, he met and married Betty. A devout Christian, Betty attended church regularly, but Fred enjoyed sports and would spend his time at baseball games. I first met Dr. Price. We called him Kenneth at that time. He was a very nice young man doing everything to please me. I went to church at that time, so I thought he was a Christian because we didn't know nothing about uh, receiving Jesus Christ as our personal savior. And he had gone to church. He told me he had been baptized. But anyway, later on, he told me he was baptized a devil. He went down a dry devil and came up a wet devil. But anyway, he treated me very nice. We went to church every Sunday. He used to come over to my house and eat okra and lima beans and fried chicken or black eyed peas and, and okra every Sunday. And we went to a movie and he went to church with me every Sunday. And after we got married, he told me that he did not want to go to church with me anymore because he wanted to play baseball on Sundays and don't ever give him any okra. One day, the newly married Fred Price followed his wife to a tent revival. That one day would change his life forever. When I went forward to receive Christ, I don't know how I got there. I don't know, I don't ever remember getting up out of my seat. Didn't understand much of what I was accepting. It was just a knowing on the inside, this was the next step in my life. The divine destiny of Fred and Betty Price continued when they accepted the right hand of fellowship at a local Baptist church. It was there that Fred received his call to preach. It just so happened that, that when that voice came, he was right there reaching his hand out to mine and said, and young man, what will you do? And that's when I heard the voice. And when he said, what will you do? I said, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to preach the gospel. God, through Fred's loved ones, brought peace and assurance that he was in God's divine will. Up till that time, I was a very nice heathen. And obviously, they wanted me to uh, get saved. When I told them this experience, they were just, you know, they were elated. And obviously, Aunt Tina, she, um, sort of related it to the Old Testament where the, the prophets would say, and the word of the Lord came to me saying, 
So they were all happy about it. I was kind of in, in Nether Netherland as such, because it was still all, all so very new. That's the most real thing that ever happened to me in my whole life. So I didn't know what I was going to do. At the time, you know, when you first get married, you want to try to please your husband, do whatever. And so I told him, I said, well, I'll go to church with you on a Sunday night. If you will, I'll go play baseball with you on a Sunday morning if you will go to church with me on a Sunday night. But he didn't want to go to church at all. So I said, well, I know better. He doesn't know any better. So I'm going to go on and do what I know is right to do. A.W. Tozier once wrote that an encounter with God brings wonderment, awe, and change. Nothing could be truer of Fred Price. His regard of God caused him to immediately answer the call to preach. He began to work in the church, but three denominations later, he felt something was missing. Traditional ministry didn't seem to hold the keys to the kingdom of God as described in the book of Acts. Up until that time, I just flowed with the tradition. I didn't know the tradition, but I jumped in it assuming this was the way to go. It wasn't until years later, pro approximately 17 years later, that I got to a point where I felt like I was um, missing something. The something, I didn't know what it was at the time, but there was a hunger that was ignited on the inside of me that was uh, almost unquenchable. How do I want to say it? it? It was so unsettling, and I felt so unfulfilled. I never doubted my call. I just was not receiving what was satisfying me.